Now, thanks to social media, the camera or the camera phone has become an ever increasing part of the stargazing experience. And this makes sense. You want to share what you see through your telescope with your friends. But when a beginner is thinking about the stargazing experience, they need to learn to set their expectations regarding stargazing targets by separating astronomical objects into three separate groups. First, objects that are ideal to view through the eyepiece. Second, objects that are better suited for cameras. And finally, objects that are great to view through the eyepiece, but also good to take photos with with beginner stargazing gear. And it's also important to note that looking at your phone screen or a camera screen reduces your eyes ability to see deep sky objects in the eyepiece. One of the challenges beginner stargazers had is that the stargazing apps don't differentiate between these categories. And many stargazers find themselves searching for objects that are simply impossible to see with the gear that they're using. In this video, I wanna talk about this versus this. Welcome to Learn to Stargaze. So I was cleaning out the garage this weekend and I put that 60 millimeter telescope up on Facebook Marketplace, the one I used in my last video, Newbie versus Pro. And the first thing the buyer asked me was, well, how do I attach my DSLR? Just like the 10 year old me did in the previous video. And earlier this year, the opposite thing happened, but the story is a little bit more technical. See, I've been working on a book with Dr. Cyan Proctor from the Inspiration4 mission. During one of our Zoom calls, Cyan mentioned that she wanted to get into astrophotography, but didn't want to deal with cameras and cables. She wanted a system that just worked. So I put her in touch with Tim Russ, the Star Trek actor and amateur astronomer who wrote the foreword for my book, 110 Things to See with a Telescope. Tim helped Cyan pick up the EV scope. Now the images she'll get won't be high quality, but for sharing with friends and students in real time, the EV scope seemed like a good fit. Now Cyan was extremely excited to start using the telescope and she planned to go through my book, 110 Things to See with the Telescope. And at first I was like, awesome, an astronaut is using my book to share the night sky. But then I thought about the targets and realized that since that telescope is basically a camera, there are better targets than those listed in my book, which is targeted at people using eyepieces, not cameras. For example, if you want to inspire and impress people with your backyard telescope through the eyepiece, you might look at, well, the moon, Saturn, a globular cluster like M13 or the Orion Nebula. Now, someone with a telescope that's designed to take pictures might also choose the Orion Nebula, which appears in color on camera. But they might also choose the Horsehead Nebula, the Bubble Nebula, or the Wizard Nebula. With a light pollution filter, these objects look great on camera, even from the city. But here's the thing. The Horsehead Nebula, the Bubble Nebula, and the Wizard Nebula are completely invisible from the suburbs in your eyepiece. In fact, to see any trace of these nebula with your eyes, you need completely dark skies, a moonless night, and a fairly decent telescope. Even with all of these, you're probably not gonna hear your friends go wow when they finally resolve the object in the eyepiece using averted vision. So say you're a beginner stargazing with your friends, and say you're using my book, 110 Things to See with a Telescope. You'll probably only observe five to seven objects on a given evening. But here's the thing, those five to seven objects that you choose to impress your friends with will be completely different if you have an astrophotography rig or an EV scope like Cyan or Tim uses. Now it's important to realize two things. First, that stargazing and astrophotography are very different hobbies. And second, you can recognize that the overlap between these two hobbies is slim. But if you get it right, it can be a lot of fun. Moon photos are a great example where these two hobbies overlap. In my next video, we'll discuss all the different ways to connect a camera or a smartphone to your beginner telescope. Be sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss that video. So as I said in the beginning of the video, when we're thinking about the stargazing experience, we really need to divide our expectations among these three separate groups of targets. The targets ideal to view through the eyepiece, the targets that are better suited to cameras, and targets that are good through both the eyepiece and cameras with beginner gear. Focusing on group number one, these are objects you'll find in books like 50 Things to See with a Telescope or 110 Things to See with a Telescope. These include bright nebula like M42, globular clusters like M13 or M22. Now focusing on group number two, objects that are better suited for cameras, these can be found in books like The 100 Best Astrophotography Targets by Ruben Kier or simply by following astrophotography YouTubers like Trevor Jones and seeing what they're targeting. And now for group number three, there are only a handful. Again, these are objects that make great targets for stargazing and for photography with beginner gear. 
For solar system objects, this includes the Moon, Saturn, and Jupiter. Many people also like to experiment with the Orion Nebula, or M42. I've had the best luck with all these objects by setting my camera or my phone to video mode, then going and stacking the video into a single image using PIP and Registax when I'm using a PC or Linkios when I'm on my Mac. I've covered all three of these programs in previous videos. Now shooting in video mode helps because typically with beginner gear, you're not tracking and long exposures tend to leave star trails or smudges on the image. You can also post the video to social media and that's often more pleasing than an individual image. Other targets that are fun to observe and photograph through the eyepiece are double stars like Alberio or Winter Alberio. You can also observe and photograph the phases of Venus and bright star clusters like the Pleiades or NGC 457. Shout out to Lee from Passage for giving me this epic jacket. Passage provides aid to underserved Latin American students. Funds raised go towards school supplies, technology, lab equipment, books, and other classroom essentials. And shout out to my cousin Jared for giving me this cool hat. Jared is the CEO of Lone Oak Brewery on Prince Edward Island. Congrats, Jared, on the opening of your second location. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you learned something. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss the next video where I show you how to connect a camera or a smartphone to a beginner telescope. And remember, the future is looking up.